Hi, I'm Dr Pippa Watson and in this video I'll be examining Doreen's hands. Doreen has hand pain due to underlying rheumatoid arthritis. So it's important to make sure your patient's comfortable, perhaps by putting their hands on a pillow. Firstly, we're going to just have a look at the hands. With the patient's hands palms down, look for obvious changes, perhaps starting at the nails and working your way up. So in the nails, I'm looking for changes like pitting or ridging or nail fold vasculitis. I'm looking up at the joints to see whether there's any swelling or deformity, whether it's symmetrical or asymmetrical. I'm looking for muscle wasting and I'm looking at the skin to see whether there are any changes such as steroid effects. I often tell students to imagine looking through layers. Firstly, the skin, then muscle, tendon, joints and bones. Alternatively, start at the fingertips and work your way proximately. Now just going to feel with the back of my hand for temperature. So I'm feeling above the joint, over the joint and below the joint for any changes. Could I ask you just to turn your hands over for me please Doreen? And as Doreen does that I'm just looking at the movements of her elbows and her wrists. So on the other side of the hand I'm looking particularly for any scars such as after carpal tunnel release. I'm looking at the muscle bulk of the thenar and the hypothenar eminence. I'm just going to gently pull the skin apart uh, to look in the skin creases for any signs of anemia. We're now going to feel the hands. Can I just check, Doreen, are your hands painful at all today? No. Please let me know if anything I do is uncomfortable. Yeah. So with the patient's hands up, I'm just going to feel the bulk of the thenar and the hypothenar eminence. And as I do that, I'm just going to check sensation. If I touch you on both sides, does it feel the same? Yes. Thank you. I'm also just going to feel the pulses at this stage. And then could I ask you to turn your hands over for me, please? Thank you. So I'm just going to squeeze gently across the MCP joints, looking at the patient's face. Is that uncomfortable at all? No. Thank you. How about that? No. And then I'm just going to use both of my hands to palpate the MCP joints. Again, looking at the patient's face. Is that uncomfortable at all? No. Thank you. We often see students not quite pressing hard enough for fear of hurting or inflicting pain on the patients. When teaching, I often ask the patient to give direct feedback to the student. This usually involves the patient saying that the student doesn't press hard enough. And what we're looking for when we're doing this examination is whether there's any inflammation in the joints. Is there a boggy swelling that's usually tender and can also feel warm? There may be evidence of previous synovitis, whereby the joints are thickened and rubbery, but aren't tender. Compare one joint to another, or your own. You need to decide, are the joints normal? It's also important to bimanually palpate the wrists. Is it sore when I'm doing that at all? No. Thank you. And this is a useful time just to run your hand up the arm to the elbow, feeling for any rheumatoid nodules and looking for psoriatic plaques. We need next to assess the movement in the hand. Could I start by asking you to do this for me, please, Doreen? Thank you. And then pull your hands down as far as you can. And then if you could turn around for me, please. So this is looking at Doreen's wrist movements. Thank you very much. Could I next ask you just to extend all of your fingers as far as you can? Thank you. So if patients are unable to fully extend their fingers, this may be because of problems with the joints or with the tendons eh, or with something neurological. And actually, in Doreen's case, it's because of her joint, eh, joint problems. Could I ask you just to make a grip like that for me, Doreen, and bury your fingers? OK. So you, some of these fingers are not able to fully eh, flex as mine are. Thank you. Eh, so I'm just going to test your power now, if that's OK. So if I give you my fingers, could I ask you to squeeze them as tightly for me as you can? And could I ask you to do that for me, so to make a pincer grip? Can you keep them together? Don't let me pull them apart. Thank you. So that's quite a useful functional grip. Are you able to pick up that coin for me, please? It's useful to finish with something functional. Thank you very much. Asking a patient to pick up a small object, it says is a pincer grip and function. You could also ask them to hold a cup or undo a button. To summarise, this patient has a bilateral, deforming, symmetrical polyarthropathy consistent with the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. There is evidence of old synovitis at the MCP joints with ulnar deviation. Deformities include subluxation at the MCP joints and wrists, Z deformities of the thumb and boutonnier deformities of the fingers. The patient maintains good function with good power and pincer grips. 
the diagnosis is rheumatoid arthritis of the hands. It's always useful to try and identify if you feel the process is active, i.e. are there signs of ongoing inflammation, or inactive, i.e. the disease appears to be in remission, again based on these findings of pain and tenderness.